Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. In today's video, we're going to be talking about MILSERPs, specifically getting into military surplus collection in this day and age in 2019. The goods, the bads, and really what you can expect when you buy your first military surplus firearm. But unfortunately, the military surplus industry nowadays in regards to firearms is starting to get harder and harder to get into. Now there are still affordably priced items out there, but I would say the most difficult part about getting into military surplus collecting nowadays is having the budget to actually buy what you wanna buy. And these markets are drying up and prices are increasing. On things like this M9130 Mosin Nagant, you used to be able to buy these guys in the crate for about $1,000. So a crate full of these rifles for about 1000 bucks. Now, one of these rifles can actually see prices of anywhere of $199 to $250. Compared to every other rifle that's out on the market nowadays, that's still not a bad price. And for a little bit more than what you would get a high point carbine for, you can get a very reliable military service bolt action rifle that has served many, many decades all around the world. But still, it's worth noting that originally you used to be able to find these guys in a barrel for about $10, and now they are much more expensive than that. Now we cannot mention price and leave out things like this Mauser K98. If you're into military surplus collecting at all, you will know immediately that German military surplus is much more expensive than anything else. And things like these K98s can go for crazy amounts of money on the used market. It depends on the condition of the rifle and where you're buying the rifle from and where the rifle itself is from and where that rifle served. But normally, German military surplus honestly speaking, goes for a little more than what it's actually worth. Don't get me wrong, the K98 is probably one of my favorite military bolt action rifles of all time, but I definitely could have a very hard time paying $1,000 for a K98. Right up there with price is the US military surplus rifles. Things like these M1 Garands are now currently going for well over the $1,000 mark. In fact, it's very hard to find one below that is still in good shape. You can expect to pay about $1,000 or $1,200 for a good shooting rifle. There are organizations like the Civilian Marksmanship Program that still have these M1 Garands for a relatively cheap price, but be aware, you have to jump through a couple more hoops to actually be able to get them to your door. It's not as simple as just clicking on online, buying it and getting it sent to the shop. Where I think price shines is with the military surplus pistol market. In this day and age, we are seeing a ton of military surplus pistols coming in and being available for very, very reasonable prices. Things like this M57 Tokarev are coming in for around $220. That's at times about $30 more than a standard high point C9 pistol. So I would take this any day over a high point. So if you are a new military surplus collector and you're looking to get all of the particular pistols from that specific country or from that specific model, pistol collecting may be the easiest way to go about doing that and not completely break the bank. Aside from price, we can talk about availability when you are first getting into military surplus collecting. There's really not many sources out there aside from gun broker that you can go to that is just a go-to store for military surplus. Now online, there are a couple of those, including Classic Firearms and J&G Sales, that will have a common stock of military surplus that is getting into the market. But if you're looking for an in-person military surplus store, it's very rare that you're gonna find one that's going to have a lot of these firearms currently in inventory. What's going to happen is you're just gonna to have to search the local gun shops in the area in their used gun department in hopes that they do get in more military surplus than other stores. You might get lucky to go into a pawn shop and find some really cool military surplus stuff that somebody just didn't know they had and sold in, but the reality of it is it's getting harder and harder to actually track down these guns 
in store in person. This would be probably one of the only times I would actually recommend a gun show for being able to find good prices on things nowadays. Unfortunately, gun shows have quickly become probably one of the worst places to go to find well-priced, cheap items. But if we are talking military surplus, probably one of the best places to go to be able to haggle prices and find that gun you were looking for is a gun show. So look for them in your area, see when the next one is coming up, and at the very least, go to one, check it out, see some of the prices that people are offering, and you may actually be able to haggle down and find yourself a pretty good deal. Now, the reason why I mentioned in person is because you have to be careful with actually purchasing these items online. It's a very, very risky move to buy a military surplus pistol or rifle without seeing the condition of the exact one that you are buying first. Remember guys, these are not newly produced firearms. They have seen a lot of wear, and many of them have been through a couple of different wars. So it is very, very common for them to be in pretty bad shape. When buying military surplus rifles or pistols, try very, very hard to get one in person and actually inspect the firearm before you end up purchasing it. I've seen it time and time again that when people blindly buy online, even with using options like hand select, they get the item to their door and they're unhappy with the fit and finish. This is just the name of the game when it comes to military surplus collecting. Now you also may get lucky and you may get one coming in from the crate that is in really good shape. If we're talking about an item that's about two to three hundred dollars, this may not be as big of a deal to you. But if you're buying a German K98 or another really expensive military surplus rifle, Obviously, this is going to be much more of a concern, and you may want to request images of the bore and the internals of the rifle if you are purchasing it from an online used source. Something else to consider, aside from price and availability of purchasing your first military surplus rifle, would be ammunition. There's a couple of military surplus rifles and pistols on the market that really are great, but the ammunition is extremely difficult to find. So if you do not reload and plan on shooting your military surplus rifles a lot, pistol calibers like 32 ACP and 7.62 by 25 are getting extremely expensive. So that would be something to think about before you start purchasing items like that. The gun itself may be very inexpensive, but the ammunition may not be. That is particularly why I love this Ishapur 2A1 because it gives you the feel of an Enfield but it actually has very, very available ammunition, which is 762 by 51. I'll put a link to the video that I just did on my Milserp Monday series in a review of this particular rifle. But there's a lot of rifles out there that have actually been converted in their military service history to fire a much more available round. So this would be a great option, and they're pretty inexpensive rifles. When we're talking military surplus handguns, luckily there are still a significant amount of them that are actually chambered in 9mm, like this Beretta 92S. Something like this pistol can easily be had for sometimes less than $300, and it shoots 9mm, so ammunition availability is no issues at all, and it's actually very affordable to shoot. So for a first-time military surplus collector, this would be a great choice. And nowadays, they're even offering things like this M57 in 9mm. They are out there and they are readily available. They may not be as exact or well used as the original M57, but they give you the look and the feel with a more affordable caliber. Another thing to mention about ammunition is the fact that although a rifle like this M1 Garand is chambered in 30-06, it is not designed to shoot the newly manufactured 30-06. You can easily get a fix to this problem with an adjustable gas block that you can just simply screw in place of the original gas block. I've seen it time and time again that somebody will put hot 30-06 modernly produced ammunition in here and actually harm the rifle. So it's important that you look at exactly what your rifle shoots. In particular, in this case, it would be M2 Ball 30-06 that's loaded slightly differently than modern 30-06 ammunition. And the last thing I wanna mention when it comes to getting into military surplus collecting is to buy now. Guys, unfortunately, this market is never going to be a market that's going to come down in price. Everything that you see here right now is probably going to be the lowest price that it's ever going to be at. 
the more that these rifles get bought up on the market and the more that the stocks dry up, the more expensive they are going to get. So if you are thinking about getting into military surplus collecting, buy right now. Because remember, there was a time when things like the Lee Enfield and the Mosin Nagan and SKSs could be had for about $10 to $50, and now they're about three to $500. Imagine what we'll be saying in about 10 to 20 years about when we could buy those Enfields and SKSs for three to $500 when those rifles could be over a thousand. Buy what you can, especially when it comes to military surplus pistols. There will be a time that a really inexpensive pistol that's out on the market now will dry up and unfortunately become more and more expensive. If you have a military surplus firearm that does require certain accessories like magazines or another option, go ahead and buy those magazines as well. That's pretty much gonna wrap this video up, guys. I hope you found it helpful. Head down to that description and check out the Firearm Freedom Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. We do daily posts on all three of those, and on the Instagram account, we do live streams twice a week. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you enjoy the content that's coming out here on the YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more great videos to come soon.